Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. Your mount is already attached. Mine is not. What screws do I use to hold this on? Come on, guys. You got to help me out here. Are kit 3D printers really worth it? These days, it's possible to buy a 3D printer that maybe isn't complete but costs a lot less money and then buy upgrade kits for it and work on it until it is like a much better 3D printer. But at the end of the day, you know, you just got to ask yourself, what's your time worth? Now, before we go on, I want to talk to you a little bit about extra wallets. Hey, don't look at me like that. I told you I was going to sell out. Not to bury the lead, I want you to check them out. The link is in the description. And if you use the code 3D when you check out, I get a little kickback and you get a discount until the end of April for their anniversary sale. If you're anything like me, and the analytics say you probably are, then chances are you have in your back pocket a big hunk of leather that even if it's completely empty, is still making a square-shaped hole in your glutes every time you sit down. But it worked for your dad and it worked for his dad, so it's good enough for you, right? Wrong. Exter makes thin and sleek card carriers that are super elegant and don't take up a lot of space. Now, they let me try out a couple of different kinds. And while I thought that I was going to prefer the Parliament because it is the one that looks the most like a traditional wallet, I found that in actual practice, loading it up with the sort of things that I usually carry around with me, that their aluminum card holder was a little bit more efficient for what I do. It has changed the way that I do things, and I gotta say it's super cool to pop your cards out to make a purchase with. So check out Exter in the link in the description and remember to use the code 3D on checkout for 25% off during their anniversary sale. Okay, back to the video. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor and it is unusual that I get to re-review the same 3D printer but in different iterations over time. But you know what? With the King Rune KP3S, that definitely seems to be what's happening here. A while back, I reviewed the KP3S, just the KP3S. And at $180, it was, well, at $180, my expectations weren't very high. If it worked at all, that was going to be praise, and it worked extremely well. There were a lot of things about that 3D printer that were worth praising. So I did, and I said it was a great 3D printer. But it wasn't a perfect 3D printer. There were certainly things about it that, for the price, I was overlooking. There were things about it that, for the price, I was not overlooking. For instance, it had an external power supply that was just, well, it was a power supply, the sort that should be inside a device with exposed leads sticking out and it really was not very uh, safe. But there were other things about the KP3S that I did overlook, like for instance, the fact that when you loaded filament in it, there was no procedure on the fancy touch screen that it had for loading procedure. For many 3D printers, you say, I want to load the filament, and you, it says, well, okay, do you want PLA or whatever, and it automatically heats up, and then it says, okay, now stick it in, and it pulls it in. None of that. None of that on the KP3S. What you did instead is you went over to the menu, you went over to the extruder nozzle temperature, and you plus, 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 until you got it up to uh, 200 degrees for PLA. Then when it got up to temperature, you shoved the filament in by hand, releasing the pressure on the lever, shoving it in until it went in. Now, this isn't that difficult to do. And once you learn how to do it, really it's fine. But it was something that, quite frankly, could have been better with a loading script. Then King Rune made an upgrade to the KP3S in the KP3S Pro. And the KP3S Pro did integrate the power supply into the unit while still keeping it within this very small and, dare I say, portable form factor. So big ups to King Rune for that. 
Hey everybody, Editing Room Joe appearance. One of two in this video because I realized that I forgot to show you the prints that this 3D printer was capable of. And yes, it can do really nice 3D prints. The prints that come off of it are absolutely beautiful, measurably accurate enough. These were printed in tech sonar dual color red and yellow silk PLA so it changes color as you go around it so that's a lot of fun but yeah the prints that come off of the KP3S Pro are I would say very acceptable but and I'm gonna rant a little bit about the filament loading on the KP3S Pro they did not make it better in fact they possibly made it worse while trying to make it better because see the KP3S did not have filament runout sensors on it whatsoever. The KP3S Pro does, but that filament runout sensor isn't near the nozzle at all. It isn't seamlessly integrated with the filament loading procedure. No, it's way over here on the end of the x-axis arm, meaning that you have to slide the filament in over on this side, bring it up through a tube and feed it into the arm. And that is after plus, 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 plus to bring the temperature up to heat and releasing the pressure on the arm manually by yourself. And again, it's not something that's impossible or difficult to do, but it's something that a little script on the screen would help a ton. Now I say that that script isn't there, but the truth is there is a filament loading script, but you only see it when the printer runs out of filament. If you are in the middle of a print, there is a menu option there to load and unload filament and it will automatically do the running out of the filament and then tell you to pull it out and tell you to put it in and let you load it up. It's there but it's not on the main menu. And I mean, it's a really good thing that they did put it in that pause menu during a print, because if you do the normal procedure where you're doing it manually and cranking it and pushing it, it's possible that in the process of pushing the filament in, you might push the Z axis down. And because this printer can't tell that the Z axis has gone down, it will continue to try to do the print and ruin it. I may have done that myself a couple of times before I realized that the filament loading and unloading procedures were on the pause menu in the middle of a print. But before I found that, yeah, I ruined a couple of prints. After though, it's there, but now I'm like going, oh, why don't you give me that on the main menu? And they could. It's a software upgrade. It could happen in the future. And this entire rant about filament loading and unloading could be completely superfluous once they fix this, but I just got to get that out of my system. But okay, let's put that aside for a little bit. Is this printer worth it? Well, I will say this. It's got the upgrades. It is a better printer than the KP3S, but it is also a more expensive 3D printer to the tune of about, uh, well, it depends. You know what? I got another rant incoming. You know, a lot of times, and it's not just 3D printers, they do this online all over the place. They will say something is X dollars, but it's on sale right now, limited time for this much money. The funny thing is, it's always on sale, pretty much any time. And they're trying to give you that FOMO so that you want to jump in and get it right now. But the truth is, if you wait a month, it will still be on sale. So in reality, it is not the price that they're saying it is. It's a cheaper price. But that makes things really complicated for me because I try to rank my 3D printers based on the capability, the ease of use, and the price. But which price do I use? The price that they list it at or the price that they're pretty much always selling it at? So this 3D printer is listed at $229, which means that it's about... Uh, 40 or $50 more than the KP3S, but it's always on sale for 209, meaning that it's only about $30 more than the KP3S. So the KP3S Pro is, let's say, 209. But then King Rune will also sell an upgrade kit for 
$50 on sale for $35. And this upgrade kit does two things. First of all, it gives you a magnetic, removable, flexible build plate, which in my opinion is not an optional. This is mandatory. But then they also have linear rails to replace the y-axis movement, which is V-slot wheels. This creates a much smoother and much more stable y-axis movement and is a pretty darn good upgrade. But this is where I talk about technical confidence. Technical confidence is a term that I use to describe a person's ability and willingness to do technical tasks, especially when those technical tasks aren't very well defined. For some people, the idea of trying to figure out how to make something work and figuring it out on your own is a thrill. These people love to build 3D printers. They love to get kits. They love to do things with these 3D printers to constantly fiddle with them. But then there's other people who just don't want to deal with that. And the thing is, it's not on or off. It's not one or the other. I would say that I'm pretty technically confident, but I'm not like Jeremy Fielding level technical confident. Yeah, I'd be willing to do an upgrade or, or remove a couple of screws. I don't mind building a 3D printer a little bit, but for the most part, I want it together. I know how T-slot nuts work and I do kind of enjoy those. Those are kind of fun. But for some people, no, they don't even want to tighten up a screw. And then there's some people who are kind of in between. And I would say that this upgrade kit requires a fairly high level of technical confidence. Honestly, it's knocking on the upper limit of my technical confidence, but it's not because the process itself is super complicated. It's mostly because it's poorly done documented. You can take a task which is technically complicated and make it so that it doesn't require much technical confidence if the documentation for it is clear and complete. And I would say that the upgrade process for this 3D printer is not. Hey, Joe from the editing desk here, and I did it. I did manage to get the V-slot wheels off, and I got it all reassembled with the linear guides, and it works great. So if you had any doubt, I did manage to do it, but it was an experience that I never want to have again. Like, if you end up in a situation where you've got a MK3S Pro and the kit, please do not contact me and ask me how I made it work. Because, first of all, hopefully, you will have a better kit. I did contact King Rune and said, hey guys, there's been a QC breakdown. There are parts missing that this kit needs in order to function. So hopefully they will fix that. They also say that they are going to be working on the instructions so that that will be better in the future. So hopefully you will have a different experience. But if there's any mercy in the universe, this experience will be wiped from my memory. Now, I intended for this video to be a discussion about kits in general, like should you buy the MK3S or should you buy the MK3S kit and assemble it yourself, which I've done. I've assembled my MK3S and after I got it together, it's one of my favorite 3D printers because it's solid and works well. And yeah, but is that an experience I ever want to have again? Yeah, maybe not. But in the case of this specific kit, this specific kit was made for people who got the MK3S Pro, but then the S1 came out, they wanted to give people the option to upgrade their Pros to an S1. And if you have a Pro and you want to upgrade to the S1, that option exists. But should you seek that experience out, it's a bit like going out and buying a Prusa MK1 and then buying the kit to upgrade it to an MK2 and then buying the kit to upgrade it to an MK3. Sure, if you're the sort of person who wants to do that, it's an option that exists. But, you know, that's, that's I think, is a little bit different than the question of, of a kit in general. So, what about kits in general? Well, let's go back to the video and discuss that. And then there's the KP3S S1 from Sliceworks. Now, Sliceworks has actually taken this printer and taken it one step further. They've made a few 
minor quality of life upgrades. They've made the documentation much better. And if you're in the U.S., they are on call, ready to answer your questions. In fact, the Sliceworks people are so good that I have contacted them to help me get this up and running. Like, I trust the Sliceworks team that much. And honestly, if you're in the U.S., you could save yourself a lot of time and a lot of effort just going with the Sliceworks KP3S Pro S1. As for myself, I'm going to figure this out and get this up and running, but I really do value having the S1 from Sliceworks already ready to go, and I've really enjoyed using this printer. Sorry, I feel like I'm, I'm talking up Sliceworks a lot, but you know what? They really deserve it. They've earned it, and this printer is 100% worth it. You're going to see this with me when I travel around. Also, it's got a handle, so that helps. But I guess I didn't answer the question that I posed at the beginning. Are kit printers in general worth it? And the answer is, I guess, well, that's up to you. Do you want to save a little bit of money or do you want to have a machine that mostly works and that you can just turn on and use? You have that choice. You have that option. And I'm not going to ever tell anybody that they're wrong for wanting to build a 3D printer from scratch or from wanting to have a 3D printer that just works. You can make that choice, and I'm not gonna gatekeep you and say that you have to do it one way or the other. I'm gonna say, make something cool, and whether that something cool is a 3D printer or something made with the 3D printer, just make something cool, and I'd love to see it because that is where the excitement is. Well, thank you very much for watching. And remember, you are a child of God and you're special, so take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time. Oh, I almost forgot. The, the box for this printer has an awesome typo. It says that it is a fused deposition molding 3D printer, not modeling 3D printer. So what, does this make molds or something? I don't know. I love it. Molding 3D printer. <laughs> Ah, it's just, that's fun stuff.